at the time in the First World War, you did it because king and country was what you did. In the Second World War, um, and again, you did it because you would, all you and all of your friends would go and sign up to get it. In the Second World War, it was very similar. You and all of your friends, country called you, you and all your friends would sign up together. The death toll uh, for the men going over there was so horrible. Most of the men who survived never wanted to talk about the war. It was such a horrible, horrible experience. And when they're in the trenches, after a while, so many men were dying. Uh, the bodies would be in the trenches or in the dirt outside. It was pretty terrible. He said when it was time to advance, uh, the British generals were still fighting a war from 30 years ago. The Germans. They were sitting waiting for you with machine guns and they just killed thousands and thousands of men at a time. The British had a lot of um, court martials and would kill a lot of um, the guys who tried to flee. Uh, they did that to some of the Canadians early on. Uh, but after a period of time, the Canadian government finally said, enough of this, this is not going to happen. They put together a Canadian army uh, there and they gathered Canadian officers and uh, they wouldn't allow these things to happen that the British did. The Canadians in the First World War, um, they were fantastic. If they got moved to the, any area of the front and the Germans found out about it, they knew they were about to be attacked and defeated. It's just the way they were. The Canadians were really good. I was a badly injured playing football in high school. Okay, and I broke my leg and my femur. And so then Vietnam came along and um, I got a letter. Uh, because uh, they wanted me to come, they're drafting me into the, in the armed forces. The doctor opened me over and he says, what are the scars on your legs and your knees? What are that? I said, well, I broke my femur and I got a metal rod in my, in my leg to hold it all together and plates and screws. And he checked me over and he says, I had no idea who sent you the letter. He said, but you're not qualified. You couldn't be in the armed forces. They were quite willing to draft me and send me into the, into the jungle to die. Unfortunately, I destroyed my leg playing football and that was the end of it. I was just lucky. Made it difficult for most of my life to walk and run to do things, but I'm not dead. <laughs> There's a picture of my grandfather, all right? He died in the First World War. He was gassed. And I'm the only person in my family who looks like him. All the rest of my relatives have dark hair and dark eyes and look different. And we never knew who I was. We thought for a long time I was the milkman's son. <laughs> okay, he's a hell of a guy. And that's him in the uniform. Uh, I remember my grandfather saying that when we went to war, he said um, the guy on either side of him was his best friend. And he would do anything for them. I, I just think it's kind of different now, don't you? Mm. I, I have to think that in the event of, a, of we needed something, that people would rally to do it. If you watch some of the uh, heroes uh, did all the good things, the guy that rushed the machine gun and killed them all and died in the attempt to protect his friends, or the, uh, Billy Bishop in the airplanes, or somebody, you'll see these people, they did extraordinary things at the risk of their life. Uh, but they weren't usually extraordinary people before the, the war or the event. We try to honor them. Remember they. Uh, they used to stop the streetcars when I lived in Toronto uh, for a what? A minute? Mm -hmm. At 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. On the, the 11. Streetcars and the subways, everything used to stop. It's hard to believe. Now people wouldn't even think twice about it. They never think of, you know, a um, person in the war, fighting in the war, the same way as a singer, you know, celebrity. They don't think that they were important or whatever you went to war to fight for your country i mean you also fought for your friends but you fought for freedom they gave up their lives so you could do the things you wanted to do so you could have an experience and be relatively safe and grow and be prosperous and they did it willingly which is if you think about that i don't know if i would have the intestinal fortitude to do that but we had all kinds of people who think they have the right to do whatever they want to do, and they don't realize where those rights came from.
Remember, we have to wear a poppy to celebrate. Instead, we should, every time we see an older vet or whatever, we should be paying attention. 